Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20 and welcome to episode 22 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series, Season 5. I am checking in on my stuff and noticing my recyclers, like I mentioned at the end of last episode, are just having a little too much trouble keeping up with all the stuff coming in from my new running quarry. So we're going to have to get some upgrades into these machines and make sure that they're able to run, uh, you know, somewhat consistently. So let's focus on building that this episode, and of course that's not going to take too long though, so we're going to have to get into some other stuff too. Looks like I've got a redstone energy cell that I should probably recharge. How's this one doing? He's full. I can swap him out. Cool. Go ahead and do your thing, redstone energy cell and engines. Four magmatic engines are just not cutting it either. I think I'm going to want, like, even more power. We'll have to see. So why don't I start getting situated, checking out all the stuff that I'm going to need, and I'll be back when I'm ready to start making some overclockers. All right, guys, so there's one thing I want to make real quick before I, uh, you know, proceed with the overclocking of stuff. That's uh, this guy here, the ender pouch. It's pretty awesome. Uh, you've seen the ender chest. The ender pouch is part of it. Pretty cool. Check this guy out. When I open up the ender pouch of the same color combination, it's the same as opening up the chest of the same com color combination. So as I'm out in the field collecting items, doing whatever I'm doing, I can go ahead and just drop items in there, and they will be properly sorted in my sorting system. How cool is that? So, uh, not bad at all. Nice. So, of course, we've got, uh, kind of this overclocking issue here that we got to deal with, right? And, uh, I'm starting to wonder if my sorting machine can't even keep up with the quarry as fast as it's running at the moment. We might have to consider that, too. But for now, we're going to start working on those overclockers. I'm going to need a bit of tin and probably some water and, uh... Full of the good toys. Let's see. Wow, I am really low on redstone. I should probably go mining soon. I know I have a quarry, but it's going to take a while before it can really, you know, proceed to the point where it's good to go and getting me some of the good resources down at the bottom of the earth. So one downside with quarries, you need to uh, spend a little bit of time letting them get running. So let's see. Good, we have some rubber. And our scrap supply is coming along rather nicely, too. That's good. Looks like my achievements might have reset. There we go. Plenty. That should be good for now. And how am I for some refined iron? Yeah, I could probably use a little bit. Let's cook some up. All right, I will be back in just a few minutes when I've got everything I need. So one of the things you're going to find yourself making a lot of are uh, electronic circuits. So it's usually a good idea to get a handful of these guys. Um, now, along with this, I'm going to get myself this stuff here. These are empty cells which come from uh, industrial craft. Pretty cool. They can hold liquid. It's really easy to get liquid with them. I uh, just got to right click on a water source. So uh, come on over here to my little lake. I've got some water, I think. Yeah, there's some. I'll we'll just start filling these up with water. Not bad at all. I'll be back once I've filled them up. All right, so we're ready to start making some overclocker upgrades, but we can't just use plain old boring water for this. We have to actually use coolant cells. Now the downside of coolant cells is they don't stack. So uh, the other downside is they use quite a lot of tin, um, but otherwise they're not too bad to make. How am I for tin at this point? I should start getting a good amount of tin. Oh yeah, we've got plenty. I should be getting a lot more going forward just because we've got our quarry running and uh, copper and tin is found pretty commonly up above ground. All right, that should be a good amount for now. So I've got my uh, electronic circuits and I've got my coolant cells, that should do. So electronic circuit and a little bit more of this copper wiring and one, two, three, uh, the coolant cells get you the overclocker upgrade. Nice. Getting a few more. Yeah, I could probably use a little bit more copper wiring. Let me get some of that. All right, another stack or two of tin later. Got myself some overclocker upgrades. Awesome. I'm just going to leave my uh, copper cables in there. That's probably a good spot. Um, and I've got some other junk I can uh, just, you know, get rid of. Don't need it in my inventory at the moment. Cool, that'll do. Let's go downstairs and install our overclocker upgrades. Sounds like a plan. Yoink. <laughs> Dude. Portable hole, totally one of my favorites. So uh, the thing with overclocker upgrades is you can put a bunch in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put four in this recycler. Notice how much faster it runs. 
awesome. Uh, do note, however, it's going to exponentially increase the amount of power required, so keep in mind that you're going to need a pretty good supply of power in order to run these overclockers. Notice how much faster my, uh, my uh, geothermals need to run in order to keep up. And uh, with that increase in power, it looks like my timer down here can't keep up uh, rapidly enough. So remember I had it set to uh, a timer interval of 5 seconds. I'm going to go ahead and have it run every 2 seconds and refresh that thing, and it's just going to start pulling scrap out like crazy. Nice. So we've got a bunch of stuff coming in here. A little worried about the ability of this machine to pull out um, enough items. It looks like Cory's just running so fast, the sorter just can't keep up that well. Or we're backlogged now. Is that the case? Might be. I don't know. How are we doing over here? Oh yeah, look at that. Our relays are getting pretty full. It's alright. Our overclockers should be able to keep up now. So let's see what happens and if uh, the backlog starts to, you know, take care of itself. All right, yeah, I've been watching for a few minutes. Looks like the relays are starting to unclog themselves. So that's the good news. So far, sorting machine's keeping up. We'll see if we have to speed that up at some point. There is not a way to directly speed up the sorting machine, but there is a way we can set it up so that it pulls out items faster. We may, like I said, have to look into that. All right, guys, time to make another component from Railcraft. And for this, I'm gonna have to start compressing some uh, netherrack. I need some more nether brick. Good stuff, that nether brick. Gonna need it for uh, a couple different things. Let's see, yep, see, you can get it out of compressing three netherrack into nether brick. Cool. Uh, we're gonna need this for something pretty important that I wanna start working on now, uh, because it's one of those items that takes a long time to get a good amount of what I want. So let's get ourselves, uh, we've got our nether brick, we're compressing up a bit more, and I'm also gonna need some soul sand. One is not gonna do it, so I might need to make an excursion into the nether uh, in order to get the soul sand that I need. So why don't I go down there and see what kind of trouble we can get into. And I've gotten a lot of comments, by the way, about, you know, these being able to grow in the overworld, but I know they can grow in the overworld. It's cool. I'm happy with where they're at right now. Ah, those stupid bats. Those fire bats are evil, by the way. Like, absolutely, completely evil. Look at all the lava. All I see is energy. I think there was some more soul sand off in this direction, and if I remember... I'll find some, and then I'll meet you guys back in the overworld when it's ready to uh, make this new item from Railcraft. So here's what we're making, guys. Put some blaze rods in and get your blaze powder. And yes, you can macerate or pulverize blaze rods to get more blaze powder, uh, but at this point, I'm really not hurting for blaze rods, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. Uh, magma cream uh, with nether brack around here, nether brick, nether brack, I don't know, you know what I mean. And uh, some soul sand gets you a blast furnace brick. Now the blast furnace is very much uh, like the machine that we built in our liquids room over here. It's uh, it's it's used for making steel. So anything we want to do with steel is going to require this guy to get us started. So I would kind of like to decide where I want to put him. Um, you know, it's it's a pretty cool block. This is really meant to be my liquids room. Um, but one thing I'm going to get out of here at the moment is uh, this stuff, coal coke. It's going to be a good use of um, the uh, coal coke would be for uh, to use in the blast furnace. It's used as a fuel source. And also, you know, emptying out the coke oven now and then is important so that your coal can start running through. Excellent. So why don't I think about where I want to place my blast furnace? Maybe in my basement might not be a terribly bad idea, since this is where I'm kind of doing all my crafting and building anyway in my main house. Yeah, basement might be a good place. Plenty of room down there anyway, right? So maybe put my blast furnace around here somewhere. Uh, let's see. I'm going to build it right into this wall. And I think it's four blocks tall, if I recall correctly. and three by three on the base. Uh, now what you're gonna wanna do is in the center two blocks, you're gonna wanna leave room. So let's put it like this. Okay, so the center two blocks, you have to leave some room. And uh, did I miscalculate how many I needed here? I guess I did. Not too big a deal. I uh, was making a little bit extra nether brick anyway, and I got plenty of soul sand. So, there we go. Two more blast furnace bricks go right here. Remember to leave the two middle slots open. And boom! Hey, cool, we've got a blast furnace. Nice. 
Uh, this guy, like I said, powered by coal coke, and uh, it's going to take a while to produce steel. Steel takes a good amount of time. So what we're going to need is a good stack of iron or so. There we go. And we can start working on some steel. It's going to be used in a couple railcraft things going forward. Nice. So I'll be back in a few once this has started to cook up a little bit. All right, guys, time for a new forestry machine. Because uh, I have kind of my plan on, I mentioned a couple times now, I think, that I want to have like a solid power plant. So I've got a, a kind of a build in my head, but I'm going to need multiple resources from multiple different mods to put this all together. The first one I'm going to need is this guy, the Thermionic Fabricator. Uh, this is a forestry machine, which is required for making some of the more advanced forms of forestry machines. I uh, just need a few pieces of gold and glass and a chest in the bottom there. Cool. Thermionic Fabricator. Now this guy, by the way, will draw quite a bit of power and it's going to keep drawing it, um, you know, as long as it wants. And it keeps the thing running all the time. So we're going to actually want to have an on-off switch here. Not terribly hard to do, but there's no real, like, I can flip a redstone lever because there's no redstone uh, way to turn on and off uh, the flow of power into this guy. Um, so let's go ahead and place down our thermionic fabricator and you'll see it's got the green line here and we've got some power heating up here. I'm going to place some glass in the top slot and once the uh, thermionic fabricator heats up beyond this line it's going to melt the glass and we're going to be able to use that liquid glass to start creating some important stuff. Now the first thing I want to make is a peat bog. So let's check that guy out. So it's time to finally make a peat bog. I'm going to need some copper electron tubes, which I'll get from my thermionic fabricator, as you can see. Just going to need a little bit of copper and some redstone. Well, I should be able to pull that off, no problem. So let's get some. Uh, one, two, three, four, five copper, I think it was, and a bit of redstone. And I think I could probably use a little bit more glass. Could really use more redstone, holy cow. I am low. So let's give this guy a try. Thermionic fabricator making me some copper electron tubes. Now what you can also do is have more inventory in the bottom here, kind of just like the carpenter, the way that works. So uh, if you want, you can go ahead and just you know, have extra in there and just pull out multiples of that. So now that I've made my copper electron tubes, uh, I also want to check out the turbery because that's going to be another thing I'm going to need. That's going to need some tin electron tubes. All right, well, while I'm here, might as well make those, right? So uh, over here to get some tin and a little bit more redstone. Not bad at all. Now, like I said, it's going to continuously draw uh, some power here, so we want to go ahead and turn this guy off when we're done. So once we get our tin electron tubes, I'm going to go ahead and hit this guy with a wrench on the bottom. So that's in the mode that draws power out of the machine. But this machine doesn't create power, so it's basically just an off switch. Cool. So I'll be able to place my marble brick back, and anytime I want to use the thermionic fabricator, I just have to remember to kind of turn it on. Nice. Uh, the other thing I'm going to need for the turbery, both the turbery and uh, the peat bog, is going to be a circuit board. Small circuit boards uh, can actually be used for a couple different things, but uh, right now the main purpose is going to make the turbery, so I'm going to need two of these guys uh, and the carpenter. So let's get some tin and a couple more redstone. You know what, how much do I need total? Uh, I need 12 redstone total and two more tin. Boy, I hope my quarry gets to the redstone level soon. I'm going to have to go mining, I think. There's no way I'll be able to survive with that little redstone. So, uh, not thermionic fabricator, but carpenter. And you're going to need some water in here uh, to get this guy to work properly. Uh, let's see, how much creosote oil is in there? Just a little bit? Alright, hold on. Let's see, what do I want here? Just gonna get myself a little bit of wool. There we go. And two glass panes plus wool will give me a pipette. This is the perfect tool for getting uh, liquids out of uh, a tank. If you have like a real small amount of liquid in there, just left click and it'll fill the, uh, or it'll pull the liquid out and fill the pipette with the creosote oil. So that little bit of creosote oil that we had left there uh, is now sitting in the pipette and this guy is empty so I can put some water in there. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do right now. I got a water bucket. We'll see if we need more. I don't think I will. I might need more. We'll see. There we go. So uh, this guy, as I recall, was something along these lines. Cool. Go ahead and run, Carpenter. Do I need more than one bucket of water? We'll find out pretty soon. 
Yeah, I do. All right, let me go get another bucket. Now, I think all that's left to do is make the items for the peat bog. Let's get them put together. So, uh, a couple sturdy casings here, circuit board. Copper electron tubes gets us the peat bog. The peat bog is what's going to uh, grow peat for us. What is peat? Well, it's a really nice resource. It's uh, kind of a growable form of coal. So, uh, it acts as a resource. You can see here it produces about 5,000 EU or 2,000 heat. And uh, by comparison, coal um, grows uh, a little little bit less, 4,000 EU and 1.6k heat. So it's a little better than coal, but it's growable, which makes it renewable, which is awesome. Uh, the turbaray is going to harvest while the peat bog plants. So let's go figure out where we want to build this little contraption. Uh, we're going to need a couple other things for this, but for now we're getting started, so that's cool. All right, guys, I think this is where I'm going to want my power plant to be. I've kind of, uh, you know, laid it out, making it look nice. It's going to be a, a 13 by 13. I think that should be enough uh, room for what I want to build in there. Uh, it should actually be plenty of room. And then uh, I want the peat bog to be very close by. So I'm thinking the peat bog could be right back here behind it. Now, uh, the peat bog is going to grow in a 15 by 15 area, if I recall correctly. Yep, 15 by 15. So we're going to want the peat bog uh, probably growing. Mm, let's see. If I were to go out uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. If I put it right here, it would be right on the edge. So let's go uh, maybe three or four steps away from that. Cool, that ought to do. Uh, might as well get myself a uh, one of these dudes and maybe even this guy. That's better. And just take down this tree right here. I love this wand. Alright, so that's where I'm going to place my peat bog. Sound like a good step to get started? Cool. So let's first uh, place him down. Peat bog, you can go right here. And next to it, I'm going to place my turbary. Uh, just usually want to place those nearby. Right next door is usually a good spot. So peat bog is going to require some uh, bog earth. Let's check a look at that. Bog earth is uh, pretty easy to make typically. You just need a, a can of water of some sort uh, and some sand and some dirt. So let's look into a way that we can automate doing that. All right, guys, time to put together a few little gadgets. Uh, I think what I'm going to need is to get myself a decent amount of wooden gears. I'm going to actually just get all eight. Why not? Uh, but I'm really only going to need four. Uh, but along with that, I'm going to need a crafting table. Four wooden gears around a crafting table will give us an automatic crafting table, which is a really cool item from Buildcraft that allows us to automatically craft stuff, which is, you know, Perfect. Uh, I'm going to get some cobblestone transport pipes. We're probably going to need a chest or two. I'm thinking two chests ought to do. Uh, I have a build in mind, but uh, while I'm waiting for uh, or putting together everything I need, I'm going to head over here to my assembly table and drop an ender pearl in it um, along with a piece of redstone. And hopefully this will allow us to get what we need. There we go. I don't want a redstone chipset. I want a pulsating chipset. This guy, uh, as you can see, requires an ender pearl and some redstone. We've got our lasers running, so we're going to let that run for a moment. That's going to be a very cool little piece of uh, technology for us right now. Uh, to go along with that, I've got the chest. I've got an automatic crafting table. Why don't I show you guys the uh, recipe that I've got in mind here. It's called Bog Earth. This stuff is required to grow your peat. Now, as you can see, you're going to need a decent amount of both sand and dirt. Okay, so sand, dirt, good stuff. All right, but we're going to have to put this together and get bog earth. Your best way to do it is with a water bucket. You can use water cells. You get a little bit more if you do that, but of course that requires a good amount of, um, you know, water. You could also do it with a uh, carpenter if you had some mulch. Not going to worry about that method. Uh, a couple different ways really to get this stuff, but the most efficient without using a lot of tin is water buckets. Uh, unfortunately, the problem with water buckets is they need to constantly be refilled, which is why I'm going to get myself a little item here to help out with that. So let's get a few pieces of iron. How am I for smooth stone? I'm good. And I've got a glass pane and I'm going to need one more chest. And I think that ought to do it. So, uh, oh wait, one more thing. A piece of redstone. Just one. Told you guys it's going to be hard. I got to get some more. I'm going to do this with a turtle. 
So I've got a nice computer here. Uh, computers come from Computercraft, obviously enough. And uh, they are a great way of automating some things. But even better are turtles. Turtles are little robots that can do all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, however, they require a bit of programming to get them working. So the turtle is going to play a role in this. Uh, while I'm here, I can see my assembly table is done. It made my uh, pulsating chipset for me. So uh, the way you use this guy is you have to combine him with an existing logic gate. So real quick, I'm just going to make a normal gate. And uh, I only want one, so I'm going to pull out the redstone chipsets there and let this guy process. Cool. So let's check out the turtle. What can he do? He can do a lot. This guy can move around. He can mine. He can do almost anything. We're going to see a lot of turtles in the near future. Uh, they're pretty awesome. But it does require some programming. Not that big a deal, though. We can manage. Uh, I'll show you guys a couple tips and trips throughout this series so that you can learn uh, good methods of programming your turtles. Uh, but to go along with that turtle, I'm actually going to give him an iron tank gauge. Uh, what this guy does is he upgrades his turtle into a tank turtle. Tank turtles are a, a turtle that can store liquids, basically. Uh, that does not come from uh, the vanilla Computercraft mod. Computercraft itself really just adds the turtle and a few other types of turtles. Uh, but there's another mod called Misc Peripherals by Richard G. He's the guy who uh, also works on Industrial Craft. He made uh, the Misc Peripherals mod, which adds a ton of add-ons to turtles, like massive amounts of add-ons. All right, place the gate, pulsating chipset, and iron chipset get you an autarkic gate this guy I'll show you about in just a moment. So we've got our tank turtle. Tank turtles are basically turtles that can store liquids. Awesome. And I think I've got everything I need for a nice automated method of producing uh, some bog earth. All we're really going to need to go along with this is some more sand. So let's get that taken care of. And I'm kind of hurting for sand at the moment. Like, not something I have a lot of. And I'm pretty sure if I use my minium stone right now, it's going to get used up. So let's get um, another minium stone ready to go. I'm going to need from my thumbcraft and magic chest some more shards of minium. And I'm probably going to need a piece of gold and some iron. Cool. All right. Just get this guy ready because I know when I transmute a bunch of this stuff, it's going to use up the last of my minium power. Inert stone, shards of minium. Cool. Let's get uh, a bunch of, uh, well, let's go with four stacks of this stuff. So I'll be back once I've transmuted all this stuff into sand. All right, so let's figure out how we want to put this together. I've placed down my uh, automatic crafting table. I'll show you guys how to use that in a moment. Uh, but the thing is, automatic crafting tables will pull from adjacent inventories to get their resources. So I'm going to place actually two chests, one on either side. There's a reason for that, trust me. Uh, digging down here, I want to go ahead and place my turtle right underground. And then I'm going to go just a little bit deeper. And uh, let's see, what do I got going on here? There we go. Uh, so I want probably something along these lines. That ought to do. What I want to have is an infinite water source down here. I'm going to show you guys some basic turtle functions right now. And don't worry, this won't get too programmy. So uh, real quick, we've got this awesome turtle, and he's hanging out right here above an infinite water source, right? Good. I'm going to go ahead and cover up this part of the ground and show you guys this. So what we can do here is open up Lua, which is kind of uh, the way of manually sending commands to turtles instead of running programs. In turtles, there's two ways to do this. You can either run a program that exists already or write your own. In Lua, you can kind of test writing your own. So uh, what I'm going to do is the following commands. And I'm not going to go too much into what I'm doing just because uh, I have a uh, um, tutorial series on how to do turtles, so you can check those out. Uh, but basically, I'm connecting right now to this little tank on the right-hand side, and then I'm going to tell the tank to suck up water from right below it. Ta-da! It tells you it picked up a 1,000 uh, milliliters of water, which, as we know, is one bucket. Cool! And you can see there's even a little bit of water in there. And I can run that command a few times, and if it runs zero, it says, like, probably the infinite water source hadn't refreshed itself yet, so it didn't pull up. The other thing we can do with this guy is uh, do m.pack. Um, 
And what that's going to do is it's going to drain a little bit of water out of its internal buffer and store it in the water bucket in the slot that's currently selected. And we can unpack if we want as well to drain the water. Awesome. So that should give you guys an idea of how this is going to work. Uh, I'm going to write a quick program to uh, automate something pretty awesome. So here's a very simple program. It's going to basically connect to the tank on the right and uh, select the inventory slot number one. And then it's going to continuously loop and do the following sets of commands over and over and over again ad nauseum. It's going to um, pull the liquid out from underneath it and put it in the internal tank. Then it's going to pull the first item out of the inventory above it. This chest will only ever have a bucket. It's going to pack water into the bucket and then put the water bucket back up above. It'll sleep for three seconds and then repeat the process. Cool. Let's give it a shot and see how it goes. Uh, all I gotta do is run the command water. Boom. It's gonna pull it out, get the water bucket, um, and uh, should have placed it above. Yeah, this needed to be turtle.dropup, not m.dropup. So let's try that again. Yeah, see, that's what happened. So let's try that again. Put the bucket in the chest, and we will run the water command. Boom and it's gonna put the water bucket back in the chest. And every three seconds, it's gonna do the same thing. It's gonna repeat and uh, try and fill the water bucket a little bit more. Cool. So now let's get this thing using the water bucket. I'm gonna place all my dirt and sand in this chest, because remember, you need dirt and sand. Okay, I'm gonna get four pieces of each just for the time being. And I'm gonna put these guys like so in here. And a water bucket in the middle. Nope, I was close. There we go. Bog Earth. So now what's going to happen is the automatic crafting table will automatically craft Bog Earth using the water bucket in this chest and the uh, dirt and sand in this chest. All I got to do now is put a wooden transport pipe here. This is what actually does the crafting, by the way. So in order to get your auto crafting table to craft, you have to connect a wooden transport pipe nearby and, um, you know, start pumping out of it, which is where the autarkic gate comes in. The autarkic gate, um, I'm going to set it so that whenever there's no redstone signal, which will probably be all the time, uh, it has another feature Feature. Unlike the, uh, the regular gates, it has the ability to act as a redstone engine, which means it can pull items out of wooden pipes. Typically, you'd have to place a redstone engine under here and start running it with uh, you know, a redstone torch or something. And you guys have seen the redstone engines before. They're pretty slow, and then they heat up. Well, it would eventually pull items out every time the redstone engine uh, sent a pulse of energy. But we're going to use autarkic gates with the energy pulser mode, and it's going to go ahead and start running. Cool. So we should start seeing uh, this water bucket, you know, do its thing. Let's go, energy pulser, do your thing. Hey, look, we've got bog earth. Nice. So if we watch, you can see the water bucket emptied because of the uh, crafting from the table. And uh, every time it empties, the turtle will pull it out and refill it with water. Nice. And we've got uh, sand and dirt being used up over here, meaning we've got bog earth shown up right here. Perfect. Now, let's get this farm running. So this isn't going to be the final design of this, I don't think. We're going to have to do a couple fancier things. Um, what I could actually do is set this guy to detect the adjacent um, spot on the right here. So you can see right here, it's set up. It can detect when the amount of soil is less than 25% full. In other words, that means we've got less than a stack worth of soil because there's four spots for it. Okay, so what we'll have here now is if the soil is low, then emit your energy pulser. So right now, the soil is not low, and it will not be running. You can see the red line is off, and we're no longer producing peat. Cool. Uh, let's sleep through the night here, and then I will get this machine running. All right. Doors? Where we're going, we don't need doors. I'm going to set up my redstone energy cell just to make this build quicker. You really don't want to run your peat bogs on a lot of energy. You want to kind of run them on a low, steady supply of energy. But we don't have uh, what we want for that just yet. So let's get the peat bog running. It's going to automatically clear out the terrain nearby to make sure that there's plenty of room for this peat bog to go down. And once it clears all that out, you can see it even knocking off some of like the tall grass type stuff. Oh, there we go. It's going to start planting down the peat bog for us. So the bog earth is being planted by the peat bog right now. Now. And once this guy gets a little bit low, we should see our energy pulser turn on. Oh good, it did. So it's going to start making more bog earth for us because it detected, hey, there's not enough in this inventory. Cool. Like I said, we're probably going to want to adjust this layout a little bit, but that won't be too hard. Once I get more resources and have everything the way I want it to be, then we'll move stuff around. Cool. 
Excellent. So now that this is done, you'll note that it's going to uh, keep drawing power, even though it's not doing anything. That's why it's not a good idea to run these guys on redstone energy cells, because, you know, there's nothing else for this peat bog to be doing at the moment, but it keeps scanning and keeps using power uh, to try and make sure everything's running and, you know, it's got everything it needs. So steady supply of power is the way to go with the peat bogs. Now we just need to wait. All right, guys, we're getting pretty close to wrapping up this episode, but I want to make myself a diamond transport pipe. I'm pretty sure I haven't made these yet. And I've also got just a few other things here with me. Um, maybe want to make a gold one. How am I for gold? Just not doing too hot. I definitely need to go mining. I'm going to mine between this episode and next, I think. Uh, yeah, I know. I've got a quarry. Oh, Dyer, you got a quarry. What do you mean you're going to mine? Well, as you can tell, guys, I'm uh, hurting for some of the resources that are deeper down in the earth, and my quarry just ain't got there yet. So let's get our machines running. Uh, actually, there's one more thing I'm going to make before I wrap up here. For this machine, I'm going to need some copper gears. And I'm also going to need uh, some copper, and I'm also going to need some pistons, which I didn't plan on. So let's see, over here I should have a piston plan. I'll get one, two of those. And I'll just build it right here since I'm here. Uh, copper gears. Remember I told you guys that uh, typically you're going to have um, some kind of gears and a piston and glass in the same material top. This is the peat-fired engine. It's an engine that runs on peat. And since we have a peat bog, you know, I figured this was a good time to make some of these. Uh, these guys are actually going to be the steady power source that it's going to run um, underneath here. So let's go ahead and set up the peat-fired engines just underground here. Uh, pretty easy to run. Just uh, place these guys right underneath. And you can connect them right to the machines. Uh, like most engines, you can connect right to the machine like that. No, bad. Get back up here, you. There we go. Cool. All we got to do is give them some peat. But we don't have any yet. So, uh, you know, I'll probably run the redstone energy cell for a sec. But let's uh, let's get a little contraption set up. I've got some relays and I've got some pneumatic tubes. Uh, what I actually want to do is uh, set it up so that the, this guy here, not them, the turbary is what's going to output the peat. Um, so let's go ahead and figure out how this is going to work. So what I'm thinking is I'll have a relay here. Remember, relays will uh, eject anything they find uh, entering them into a pneumatic tube system. Um, the problem with um, Red Power 2 pneumatic tubes is um, some machines, like forestry and buildcraft machines, can automatically eject into a nearby pipe, but they can't automatically eject into a pneumatic tube just because of the way pneumatic tubes work. So instead, we have to use a relay as a buffer in between. But that's fine. So what's going to happen is I'm going to connect uh, some cobblestone transport pipes right onto the side of this machine, like that. And what's going to happen is the peat will exit the turbary go into the relay. The relay will eject it then into the nearest inventory, which are the peat-fired engines. Cool. Um, if there's no room in the peat-fired engines, though, I need it to go somewhere, and that's going to go over this way. All right, so let's see. Um, yeah, there we go. We're good here. And somebody let me out of this trap I got myself in. Nice. All right. Time to sleep, but basically uh, what I want to do is have a barrel, because I love barrels. You guys have seen me enjoy barrels severely. They're awesome. And for now, I'm just going to collect all my peat in a barrel, so that won't be too bad. Cool. Be right back. All right, guys. Here we go. Getting ready to wrap up, but need to change this a little bit. Um, the one thing this other machine here is going to do is output dirt, so that's the side effect of growing your peat bog is uh, some dirt. We want to dump that into this chest over here. Um, so the best way to do that probably is to just break this thing and relocate him a little bit. Uh, I actually got myself a couple new gates. I'm going to pump uh, the stuff out of the top here, and uh, I'm just going to connect it straight over to the top of the peat bog. Cool. But now we can no longer detect if the peat bog needs stuff, so I got myself some iron gates. These guys are neat. Um, you're allowed to, uh, you know, detect on one side. So over here I'm going to put the iron gate, and I'm going to say, hey, um, if you detect that you're low on stuff you need, for example, soil, emit a red pipe signal. You can see I just placed a red piping wire on my pipe. And then over here, I'm going to run more red pipe wire. You can see it running across a little clear on this side. And on this side, I'm going to put an autarkic gate. And I'm going to say, hey, if you receive a red pipe signal, then emit your energy pulser. So that's what's going to happen, right? We're going to detect over here. It's going to turn on this red wiring. And then when this thing detects that the red wiring is on, it's going to pull out more bog earth. 
Good plan? All right, cool. Then the final step is to get the golden transport pipe here. I guess I didn't need the diamond, but we'll see. And just connect it straight over to this guy. Now, everything, I hope, is ready to go. Uh, the best way to start this, just to demonstrate on a fast speed, is to use my uh, redstone energy cell. So let's connect both these guys, and then uh, place the energy cell right here. You ready to give this thing a whirl? Let's see what happens. Go. Uh, so hopefully what we'll see here is, uh, hey look, some peat coming out. Awesome. And all the dirt's going out the side there, and the peat should make its way to the nearest inventory, which is uh, these guys. Perfect. Uh, now I'm going to turn those on pretty darn soon. I um, want to actually just get a bunch of peat first so that they could run. And uh, yeah, look at that. So we refilled more uh, peat. Awesome. And these guys turned on, which is cool. So we should be getting more bog earth. Cool. And once I have enough bog earth here, uh, it's going to go ahead and turn off. You can see the red line is no longer on, so the energy pulsar isn't running. Perfect. Let's just demonstrate real quick. I'm going to take a little bog earth out. You can see that the red wiring is on, and it's requesting more bog earth. Cool. I like that a lot. So I think we're pretty automated at this point. Yeah, we've got plenty. All we need to do is get more sand, but that's not that big a deal. And uh, this little bit of bog earth showed up over here. I probably goofed something up at some point. All right, guys. So Direwolf20 signing off, episode 22. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, got a good amount of peat production started. It's going to start filling up this guy once we've completely uh, started uh, filling up those engines down there. Going to get my things here back and I'm going to turn on the engines probably with a lever. So this is Direwolf20 signing off like I said. Uh, come back next episode because I'm planning to put this peat to use. I think I've once I've got a good amount of it I should be able to do some cool stuff with it. So let's turn these guys on now so that this runs all the time. Cool. Now they're running. Awesome. So the peat bog will supply the peat engines and it'll produce plenty of excess peat. For now, it's going to be stored in a barrel, but I have some better plans for storage later on. All right, guys, take it easy.